can almost feel Paul pushing us up as the Holy Spirit is drawing us into new life. I want you to hold on to that image. When I was in seminary, I used to say that that great sucking sound you hear, like sucking on a straw, is the Holy Spirit calling you into new life in Christ. That great sucking sound is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, I'm going to preach on the spirit about which I know very little, but I'm going to share with you a part of my faith life. And so with that, let us begin our worship. If you will please stand. Oh, wait a second. I forgot the prelude. See, I haven't been here for a couple of weeks. Sit back down. It's not time yet. Let's enjoy the prelude. And now, if you'll please stand, we'll begin our worship with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God. We confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. And we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you'll sing with me our opening hymn, we plow the fields and scatter. But it is bread and water by God's almighty hand, who sends the snow in winter, the warm to swell the grain, the breezes and the sunshine, and soft refreshing rain. Only our God maker of all things near and far. You paint the ways of flower, you light the evening star. The winds and waves obey you, by you the birds are fed. Much more to us, your children, you give your daily bread. Thank you, Lord, Creator, for all things bright and good. The seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. No gifts have we to offer, for what your love imparts. But what you most would treasure. Thank you. 
knows his promises and leads his people forth with joy. The shouts of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Please pray with me. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you'll please be seated. First reading this morning is from the 44th chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God who is like me. Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from, who has announced from of old the things to come. Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not, be, do not fear or be afraid. For I have not told you from of old and declared it. You are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 86 responsibly, starting with the Antiphon. Teach, Teach me your way, way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forever. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion slow to anger, and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Second reading is from the eighth chapter of Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put it to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, they're heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to, to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay 
and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves. We have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? The master answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go out and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat among them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, bind them into bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him saying, we don't get this. Well, he, they said, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of God. The, seed, the field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who has sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. And just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The son of man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil doers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then. The righteous shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, this is the verse. They skipped. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. 
The Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans is a tightly argued treatise on God, law, gospel, Jesus, faith, spirit, and the kingdom. It is difficult to understand, and it has more subjunctive, dependent, and subordinate clauses than tomatoes at a farm stand in August. If you've ever had to read it out loud in church, thank you very much, Bonna, well done. You know how challenging it can be to make Paul's run on sentences comprehensible to a listening congregation. Yet buried in the depth of Paul's prose, like pearls of great value, are words and images and phrases that have secured a place in our collective memory and shed light on the mystery of faith. How many Lutherans know the verse? And yet, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Several of Paul's phrases prove precious to me. And we are blessed with two passages from the eighth chapter, one this week, short of verse, and one next week that has the verse on it. And between the two, you will hear a large portion of the eighth chapter of Romans. My favorite chapter in all the epistles. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I am not a regular memorizer of scripture. And yet the eighth chapter of Romans has proved to be a guide and a comfort and next to John 3.16, which you can help me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not die, but shall have everlasting life. Luther called it a gospel in miniature. Next to that great summary of the gospel, Paul wrote words that lie at the heart of my faith. And today, what Paul paints for us is a picture of creation groaning in labor pains. All of creation, the rich farmland here in Herkimer County and the majestic mountains out in the Pacific Northwest, the explosion of life down on the Amazon River, all of creation groans in labor pains, longing, what a word, longing for the revealing of the children of God. Now, I happen to know a thing or two about labor pains, or three. They're those strange contractions of your body that say, whoops, it's time. And now the time has come that the life that's be, been hidden inside of you, hopefully for nine months, that squirming, kicking, hiccuping life inside of you has finally grown beyond the space that confines it. And it is ready to be revealed to one and all. Labor pains mark a unique time. Father and mother and nurses and grandparents too, I dare say, spend the hours of that labor on knife's edge. The time is spent in anticipation of great joy. And at the same time, remarkably aware of the potential for great sorrow. And to be frank, there's a great deal of longing all around, a longing for it to be over, to have rest from your labor, a longing for that first glimpse 
of the expected child and for the miracle of new life to be revealed and to become a part of your reality, of your family, a part of your story. This is how it is, Paul tells us, for all of creation, longing, longing for adoption, longing for redemption, longing for new life, a new life that the crucified and risen Christ has made possible. And the spirit of God, the spirit of resurrection, the spirit of life now calls into being. Out of God's love for the world that God created, for the love of the children God called into being, for the sake of all that God has given life, this Holy Spirit calls forth new life. With these words, Paul completes a triune picture of the divine one who is constantly at work, making life possible for each part of the beloved creation. So Paul reminds us that the spirit of the living God prays with us with sighs too deep for words. When we are weak, when we do not know how to pray, when we do not know what to say, what to ask for, the spirit prays for us with sighs too deep for words. When we stand at the end of our wits, at the end of our strength or patience or money or forgiveness, when we cannot see tomorrow, when our feet are mired in concrete, when the world is spinning out of control, the spirit of God prays for us. Praise to the divine creator. Praise so that we might know life. And when society changes all around us and everything we thought we knew is called into question when we are lost and confused and when it is in fact just too much to bear the spirit prays for us when the breath of god is the only breath that we can take in the spirit of God, the spirit of resurrection, the spirit that lay with Jesus in the back of the tomb and breathed into him new life carries us forward. It breathes its prayers into our being and holds us close to the divine creator. Why? so that we might be set free from our bondage to fear and then to fill us back up again with the assurance of God's love. Or so it has been for me. I have leaned into this promise that God's spirit will speak for me, translating my deepest longings to the one who created me, flawed human being that I am, and will pray to the one who took on the role of servant so that he could be savior as well. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. If this is the only understanding I ever have of the Holy Spirit, it is enough.
and I am thankful. Amen. Please stand. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you'll please be seated and join us in a time of prayer. Thank you. 
who are unjustly in prison. These three were shut. Nan, Donna, Julie, Peter, Eileen, Kathy, Sandra, Billy, Rosemary, Larry, Tiffany, Barbara, Charlene, Gary, Nancy, Jeff, Charlie, Edith, Rachel, Teresa, Tim, Kim, Jennifer, Bo, Tanya, Gail, and Chase. And those who remain in our hearts and are for our body and prayer. Lord, we lift you to you those who mourn this morning. Pray for comfort for the family of Christina who went to be with you in your presence. We pray that you comfort them, bless them, and give them their your hope and your joy, knowing that one day they will be. In Jesus' name we pray. Your mercy is great. Make each of us as your children. I ask to truly welcome all who seek your face. Bless our education ministry to equip us for faithful living and our social ministry to enact the gospel in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord, we praise you for the gift of life that you have given us. Spirit lives in us. And so we lift our hands up to you as one to glorify you. Again, in Jesus' name. Throughout generations, Lord, you have sent faithful people to live freedom from bondage, setting captives free, and granting new life to those who suffer. Encourage us by the witness of the faithful departed. Saints now and under, so that we live into that same hope. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you all. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one and all. Please be seated. Now you may not have recognized that we have brand new paraments. Paraments is a fancy word that means the colored cloth that hangs from the pulpit and the lectern and the altar. These were um, made by members of the congregation. Judy, did you do them all by yourself or did you have a helper? Bonna and Judy did them together. And just in case you don't have your long distance glasses with you, uh, they're filled with butterflies, which have been from the beginning of the church, a sign of new life, new life, resurrection. And they're beautiful. So I would like at this moment to share a prayer of dedication. God of all grace, 
You have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Your spirit has graced us with gifts that bring glory to you and which invite others to know your love. Bless these new paraments, the gift of talent that they represent, the service to your people that this community offers, and we dedicate them to your glory. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Okay. It is my understanding there's an offering plate somewhere in the front over there. I love the way you guys help me over there. So if you'd like to leave an offering. First, I want to thank everyone, those who worship with us from at home and those who are present for your continued support for the work of Trinity Lutheran. They are involved in this community to do work to serve our neighbors in Christ's name. And it is your support that makes that possible. With that, let us stand and sing and we're all going to sing it, right, Sue? Okay, let's sing together. Build a longer table. It's a great, great hymn. <laughs> Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As we celebrate your victory over the power of death and your invitation to all creation to new life in you, we give you thanks, almighty God, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we offer our praise and thanksgiving for the bounty of your grace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. All honor and glory be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Please join me in our Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Everyone who expects to meet Jesus in this meal is welcome to come and feast at his table. It is the Lord who hosts this table and it is he who invites us. Now for those who are communing from at home, I'd like you to take your bread and hear these words. This is my body given for you. And now take your cup and hear these words. This is my blood shed for you. I invite you all to come forward. I will have the bread on your right and the wine will be on your left. We have group gluten-free wafers and um, a non-alcoholic possibility, if that would be better for you. Come to the feast, for the table is ready. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Forgathered into one to be 
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now if you'll join me in our final hymn for the fruit of all creation. The fruit of all creation for those gifts to If you'll please be seated. I have a few announcements. Women in Faith Summer Bible Study will be held on Zoom on July 24th. Contact the office so that you can get the link. Sunday, August 27th, we're holding a picnic with Zion and our Savior, and there will be more details. Are we at Frankfurt again? Yes. We're at Frankfurt again. Oh, good. Bible study continues on Thursdays at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Anything else, my my good people? Bana? Yeah, I just wanted to let people know that the bishop will be at the Holy Council of the Church on Is
it's been um, remodeled uh, years and years ago. I used to preach there twice a year when I was in Canada, Harry. Wonderful church. Anything else? It has an organ. It has a beautiful organ. So I expect they found someone to play. Is it zucchini yet? Yeah. It's zucchini. The zucchini's coming in, folks. There's beans and zucchini. There's produce on your way out. We grow it. You get to take it, whatever you need. Okay? So if you can chop an onion, you can help out. You can help out in the kitchen, right? They tried to get me to come, even knowing my culinary abilities. But it's an hour drive, so they don't want you to cook either. Whenever there was a, a potluck, I brought the rolls. <laughs> Signed up for them right away. Rose, what's up? Very good. I'm going to add to what Rose just said. Wanda was going through a very hard time. Her son, her first her son, two of her sons had just drowned. And she was praying to the Lord and looked out a window. And the glow came and she saw a butterfly fly, fly by. And she goes, Wow, that's the Lord telling me. Jesus is alive and well, and where my children are because of the resurrection. Thank you, not be And someday you will have equal stories of faith to tell. Because it it finds you one way or another. Please stand and receive a blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless and keep and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Go in peace. Share the harvest, most especially the zucchini. Thanks be to God. Thank you.